Hello and welcome to the Verdant Growth Daily, where we give you the news, tips, and tools you need to live echo. My goal is to help put you in the right mindset to live more in line with your own values and to change your life to make it more fulfilling, sustainable, and balanced with nature. All in just 10 completely unedited minutes every day. Unedited minutes a day. Wow can't say unedited. I now need now need that editing. Great. That's the problem with saying unedited. Unedited minutes a day. Anyway, my name's Eugene and this is episode 14. Today we are going to be talking about the Paris Accord or the Paris Agreement. First of all, I just want to say that I apologize for not going live yesterday. All day yesterday, I had like the Biden feed on and I was just like watching and just enjoying the new president coming in. And so I didn't actually end up going live. I probably should have just, I kept thinking like maybe I should just go live while I'm watching it, but ended up not and ended up getting late and I just never got around to it. So I missed a day of my daily and I sincerely apologize for that. But one thing that I did come across yesterday as I watched it is that we heard about how he is going to, Biden that is, is going to get back into the Paris Accord on his first day in office. And I had a pretty good idea of what the Paris Agreement is. I knew that it was something that a whole bunch of different countries had come together and agreed to limit their carbon footprints and to reduce the amount of carbon they are emitting. But I didn't know any more details than that. And so I decided that was something that I wanted to look into. And if it was something that I wanted to look into, then there are probably other people out there who are also wondering, huh, I wonder what the Paris Accord or the Paris Agreement actually is. So I did just a tiny bit of digging. I'm not going to go deep into details or anything today, but I'm just going to talk about why, uh, what it is and why I'm super, super happy to be back in it. So the Paris Agreement or the Paris Accord, depending on which, I don't know, there's several terms that it goes by, but the Paris Agreement was basically created by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change really, really long. The acronym is just as bad. The UNFCCC. And yes, I have to count those on my fingers as I say them. UNFCCC. First signed in 2016. Basically, it was a legally binding international treaty on climate change. So at that time in 2016, 197 members of the UNFCCC signed the agreement, and to this day, most of them are still uh, still following it. Uh, several have dropped out, including America. 189 remain in the Paris Accord right now, and America basically decided, I believe it was last year, in June 2017 that Trump decided to pull us out of the Paris Agreement with the actual pullout happening in November 2020. So we haven't actually been out of it very long, but um, a few months down the line, and Biden is promising to get us right back in. The point of the Paris Agreement was basically to get everybody to agree to work together to limit global warming to two preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. Basically, with climate change and the amount of CO2 that we have already emitted into the atmosphere, we are basically already locked into about 1.5 to 2 degrees of global warming. If we go past that 2 degrees of global warming, there is a huge number of negative impacts that will follow from climate change, like the numbers of droughts, wildfires, hurricanes, all the awful things that could potentially come of climate change basically start happening at two degrees. We're starting to see some of those effects now. I think the most recent figure I saw uh, was that we are currently at about 0 0.7 degrees of global warming, but that was a while back, so it could now be more than that. But the last figure I saw said we're at currently about 0.7 degrees. 
with another degree or so locked in. Like it's already decided. With the amount of CO2 in the air, like we are already locked in even if we stopped emitting CO2 right now, today then we are already in for an about another degree or a degree and a half of global warming. It's already locked in, which is why we need to get on this very, very quickly. So basically, we wanted to uh, substantially reduce the risks and the biggest impacts of climate change. So what the UNFCCC did is that it also uh, it asked people to join in and basically offered support to any countries that needed it. Financial advice, strategies that they can use to implement, the technology, all of that is uh, all part of the Paris Agreement. You become part of a global team working to fight climate change. And the way they do this is basically they have set it on a five-year cycle of increasingly ambitious climate action. So back in 2016, um, they basically said, by 2020, we want everybody who's in the agreement to submit a plan, the nationally determined contribution, that will detail how you plan on reducing, you being the country, reducing your greenhouse gas emissions, and adapt to the challenges uh, that come from climate change. How will you increase your resilience to the effects of climate change, because as we saw last year, we are already seeing a lot of those effects. Wildfires, hurricanes that we've never seen before, like hurricanes hitting places that have never been hit by hurricanes before, increasingly strong hurricanes, flooding happening throughout Italy and several other countries, the, the loss of some countries, some of the island countries that are actually disappearing under the ocean. So what are we doing to increase our resilience to climate change that is happening? Now, um, by 2020, everyone was going to do that. And then, again, by 2024, report on what action was actually taken. How much of their plans did they actually implement? How much did they progress? And then, in 2025, teams of scientists would examine all of the reports of all the different countries in the Paris Agreement, and then offer recommendations. How can they improve for the next round? And then basically that cycle would then repeat. So then again, we would have to submit a plan, and then in 2030, again, provide a report on how it went. So every time, we should be getting a little bit more strict uh, about the carbon emission restrictions. So the problem, the problem with this is that there is nothing to actually force a country to set any specific emissions targets. Like nobody says like, okay, by 2025, America, you need to be here. Canada, you need to be here. There are no actual restrictions. There is nothing actually forcing countries to actually take action. It is completely voluntary to be in it. So some of the critics of the Paris Agreement say that this is the problem. Because there's no enforcement, everyone is saying like, yes, I'm going to do my part to help fight climate change. But that's all it is. It's just words at this point. It's just a promise. Whether they actually do it or not is completely and entirely up to every country. So, like I said before, in the case of America, Trump decided that he didn't want anything to do with it and decided to actually pull us out of the Paris Agreement, um, which was obviously met with a lot of criticism. Because no matter what you think about the Paris Accord uh, itself and whether it itself is worthy of putting our effort or worthy of putting our resources into, we need to act on climate change. At this point, promises is, are a step in the right direction. We need everybody at least to say, yes, I'm going to do something so that we can actually get started on doing things. Yes, we want the action and that the Paris Agreement, the Paris Agreement only is just words. It's just promises. But it's the first step into getting action, right? If we pull out of the agreement that says, hey, we're going to help everybody in stopping climate change, then especially for America, which is a top 
country, and not only is it a top country financially, but also a top country in terms of carbon emissions, we are leading in so many different aspects of, of science and technology that if we are not promising to take on climate change, a lot of other countries tend to kind of drop out as well. So now, with Biden back in office, he has gotten us back into the Paris Agreement, and now we've gotten back to making promises. We are now making promises to act on climate. So now, the next thing to do is just to act on them. So we're looking at you, President Biden, Vice President Harris, to lead the way. That is what we've uh, had up until now, and that is what we have to kind of monitor. We need to be sure that it doesn't just become empty promises. As America, as one of the top polluting countries in the world, we need to be making sure that President Biden and his entire administration are keeping those promises. We want to hold them to those promises. So that is what we are, should all be looking into into the future and just making sure that our government is still keeping in line with that. That was it for my topic today. Oh, cool, I have one cool comment from Facebook there. Lewis saying, cool sweater. Thank you very much, Lewis. That is one of, it's my, it's my school, UCLA, yeah. I do love UCLA. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for listening. I really, really appreciate every single one of you. Remember that if you want to come and interact with me live, then be sure to subscribe to me on my channel on YouTube, find me on social media in all the places down below in the description box or on the screen. I thank you guys so much for watching. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming up on this show. I am now planning some interviews with some of my friends, uh, some other leaders in environment, and I'm really, really excited for how this could potentially open up the doors to having a lot more conversations about environment with a lot more people. I'm also looking forward to doing some very fun stuff very soon. I think what I'm going to start doing every week on Friday, I think we're going to start having Fun Day Friday. And Fun Day Friday is going to be a day where I'm going to get away from environmental stuff. Maybe. I might talk about environmental stuff, but I'm going to focus more on just enjoying and having fun about whatever I feel like talking about that day. So I'm really, really excited. Actually, I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. So be sure to tune in tomorrow. Subscribe in all the places you can possibly subscribe. If you're listening to me on the podcasts, like Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts, be sure to hit the subscribe buttons there as well. If you're watching me on YouTube or Twitch or on Facebook, be sure to subscribe or follow me in all of those places as well. Thanks again so much for tuning in, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Take care. Eugene and Verdant Growth, out.